Hello friends, and welcome to another Popper League. Today we're going to be playing something that's uh, a little bit off meta. We're going to be playing Black Burn. Alright, so here's the list that we're going to be playing today. This is kind of um, an amalgamation of uh, what uh, Popperganda uh, was playing just the other weekend. And... Um, And uh, I ended up taking out, uh, what was the name of that card? Evan Carr's Justice, uh, to play one of my favorite cards, Crypt Rats. I think that uh, Crypt Rats could be an excellent card in this deck, allowing us to get uh, a late game Fireball. Um, just being able to, uh, for, you know, however much black mana we spend, we're going to be able to get all that damage plus... If we have any serrated scorpions on the battlefield, it's going to kill those, which is going to get more damage um, onto the board. So basically, the whole idea of uh, this deck is very similar to Burn. We're just going to be playing spells, trying to get the opponent's life total down as quickly as possible. Um, one of the uh, differences, one of the advantages you could say that this deck has over Burn is that uh, a lot of the cards that we're dealing with are um, causing loss of life. So pretty much the only cards that are going to be causing damage are uh, Nizumi Road Captain when it attacks, Serrated Scorpion when it attacks, and uh, Crypt Rats when it attacks or when it's activated. Everything else is loss of life. So things that prevent damage aren't going to do anything um, in the case of these cards. And then also we're going to be able to uh, avoid any Hydro Blasts or Blue Elemental Blasts that the opponent has. Uh, normally those would be very powerful cards against a burn deck, but they're going to do nothing against us. Uh, okay, yeah, this is fine. This looks fine to me. We'll keep it. Start with a Reckoner's Raid. No, their ah, their land gains life. What am I even doing? If their lands gain life, how am I supposed to? Ever get through? We'll just have to do it again. So one of the cool things that uh, Deluxe was talking about during propaganda was that um, our deck, while it's causing the opponent to lose life, it's also gaining us life. So if we end up facing up against burn, um, some of our spells are just going to be gaining life, which is kind of cool. Kind of looks like they're holding up Counterspell, huh? I'm going to take a quick peek, peek at uh, the list that Moto popped up here. Yeah, four Counterspells. Interesting list. Squadron Hawks. That can't be right. Okay, no. Anyway, very cool. So it kind of looks like they're holding up Counterspell here, so probably don't want to play anything too impressive into it. Maybe we'll just, like, play a Serrated Scorpion. Play our worst card. If they want to counter that, fine. And if they don't counter it, then we get to... Oh, maybe they're going to counter this? Okay, they're going to let it resolve. Sure. And then we'll pass the turn. I'm not going to play one of my good cards into their counter spell this turn. Um, we're just going to make them waste their mana. And uh, we'll be able to start attacking them next turn. And when they use their mana, we'll punish them for it. Uh, 
Journey to Nowhere. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of Serrated Scorpion. Mm -hmm. And now they're tapped out. They don't have a land drop. Okay, well, we don't have any instance. Let's uh, take our turn. We get a Swamp. That's actually a really good draw. Attack in with uh, my 2 2. They land. And we're going to start with. Uh, I think we'll start with Tyrant's Choice into Sign and Blood. And I always vote Torture on this, I think. Usually it's the opponent that has to read Tyrant's Choice. This is my first time ever casting this spell, so I just wanted to make sure. Always name Torture. And Sign of Blood. Another two Sign of Bloods. Okay. Soul Sun Lance. Oh, that's a cool one. So they're really hurting on lands here. Uh, let's go with... Let's go with a Sign and Blood. Nice. Good draw. We'll go for... Sovereign's Bite. And then if they have a Force Spike, we'll let them Force Spike. Okiba Reckoner Raid. Looks like they don't, and they're at 5. Wonderba. Alright, so opponent gets uh, screwed on their lands, and we managed to capitalize on that. Right, I'm going to take another look at what uh, their list was potentially. Mirror Shell Crab, Palace Sentinels, Augur of Bolas, Squadron Hawk, Brainstorm, Preordain, Repel, Sunlands, Counterspell, Last Breath, Prohibit, Revitalize, Clear the Mind. Uh, let me just bring it over here to the uh, the main screen so we can all see it. Okay. Kind of creature spells. Foil. Interesting. Illumination. Journey to nowhere. We got... So let's see. Your dispel's not good. Healing grace is a bit of a pain. Lone missionary. Lose focus. Alright. So the they don't exactly have like a lot of good stuff. They got a couple things that they could play. Um, let's see here. I think we probably just, uh, go with the same deck as is. Uh, didn't really see much of a reason to bring in the spell bomb. Yeah. I think we're fine just as is. Okiba Reckoner Ray definitely doing some good work on that last game. A one mana spell being able to do, you know, four or more damage. It's pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, this hand is okay. Like, good enough. Not great. Kind of awkward with the alms, but uh, we'll keep it. Gonna want that sign and blood to resolve. Okay, they brainstorm in response to Bump in the Night.
They play Island and Pass. So it looks like they're holding up Counterspell. So maybe we just play Land Pass. Make them waste their, their turn. We're wasting our turn, though, at the same time, right? Wow, Alms of the Vein resolved. Maybe I just wasted my turn for nothing if they don't have Counterspell. There's a Squadron Hawk. And they pass again really making me believe that they have that counter spell if they're not playing a second squadron hawk here um let's just go for another alms of the veins then maybe they have prohibit here okay there's the counter spell they got all their lands this time so we're gonna have to play a real game of magic womp womp Crypt Rats. Oh, this is definitely awkward. Yeah, Swole Summoner. I know exactly what you're talking about. Either looks really bad or really good. I think maybe I should have went for Sign and Blood as the second spell there. Okay, tapping low. Perfect time to get a sign of blood to resolve. Either that or Crypt Rats Killer Board. That would also be pretty good, I think. Nice. Now we're just going to pass here. I think I'm willing to take 5 damage if I can potentially untap and do 4 with the Crypt Rats. Nice.
Um, that last turn, I wasn't playing around Counterspell. I was just, I just wanted more damage on my uh, Crypt Rats. Damn. That's a pretty good one. Was not thinking about Repeal, that's for sure. Torture. Don't have the red mana for bump in the night, unfortunately. Okay, so last breath means that uh, the serrated scorpion won't trigger. Because it uh, specifically says when Serrated Scorpion dies, not leave the battlefield. And it got exiled. Hey, Jim James. Yes, indeed. If you thought this was Blackburn, you would be correct. Put them down to one. I think that uh, Red Burn and Black Burn both give you uh, a similar style of deck that does kind of different things. Whereas, uh, ooh, excellent. We win our very first match with Black Burn. Love to see it. Against, like, opponent played Lone Missionary twice, and they had three Tranquil Coves. So that's, uh, they gained 11 life this game and we still managed to beat them through double counter spell prohibit i'm pretty happy about that one i guess when we discard the hand size we have alms of the vein we got a couple one drops uh risky keep risky keep tireless tribe okay swamp hey that's a good draw I guess we just put out a blocker. Let's play Reckoner's Raid. I keep on calling it Reckoner's Raid. Okiba Reckoner Raid. There's no S. Hey, the book. What's good? I'm doing all right, you know? Off work. Playing magic. It's a recipe for a good day. 
We're going to leave the Serrated Scorpion back. I want to be able to block the Tireless Tribe so we don't just die in a blaze of glory. Another Swamp. few choices here. I kind of like just play Crypt Rats. Could also Vampire's Kiss set up Madness for next turn, but then we kind of like waste one mana. Also, gaining the life here is actually pretty good. Uh, Tireless Tribe can do quite a bit of damage out of nowhere, but, you know, if we can gain ourselves up to, like, 30 life, it's going to be way more difficult for them to kill us than, say, from 20 life. Ah, okay. So we cannot block... Inside out. Uh, six times four. Oh, they played a they played a land. I was gonna say six times four is twenty four exaxes. But if you like, you played the land, so now you don't have lethal. They have white out. Okay, white out makes it lethal. Let's get that on the screen there. They can just continuously return it um, to their hand by uh, bouncing a land. Cool. All right, so let's bring in Witches. Verdict. Pass down. Let's keep the blockers so that uh, they need to have shadow in order to be able to uh, to hit us. Another one land hand. And we don't have any of the cards that are particularly good in this matchup. Another one land hand. But we got Guess Verdict. We're going to keep this one. Get rid of um, maybe one of the Sign and Bloods. Tireless Tribe is really cool. Don't really expect to see it very often anymore. Delver of Secrets. On me without a second land. Alright, does Delver flip? No flip. Augur of Bolus. Okay, so yeah, it's just... Not even worrying about the tribe anymore. They're just going to kill me with Delver. Oh, come on. Not like this. No flip. Another Augur of Bolus. They got Brainstorm, so they're going to be able to guaranteed flip the Delver next turn. I'm just missing on land every turn. Looks like we're going to be 1-1 one, one in a minute. Yeah, they sideboard into another deck. It kind of seems that way. Which is honestly really smart. Um, generally, I do not like transformative sideboards. 
but when you're taking your tri tireless tribe deck, which is vulnerable to some very specific things, and all of a sudden you're turning it into a Delver of Secrets deck, now, you know, the cards that I brought in, my guess verdicts, they're looking really bad. Okay, so these are still a tireless drive deck. It's just, uh, we didn't see any of these things in their other matchup, or in, in the previous game. Oh, they find Shadow Rift. We're so dead. Land? Okay. Circular logic is so good. This used to be an uncommon. I remember playing this when uh, it was printed. All they needed was that one card in their graveyard. It was enough. Transmute, Muddle the Mixture, look for Inside Out. Oh, they have another land. We're going to block the Tireless Tribe if they attack with it. Okay, they don't. That'll just be next turn. They're going to Shadow Rift on the Tireless Tribe, and they'll be able to kill us because they have White Out. GG. Unless we, I guess we could get Cast Down off the top. Whiteout is so crazy good with Tireless Tribe, allowing you to like potentially save that counterspell in hand, and then just use Whiteout to make the Tireless Tribe lethal while you're able to hold up a way to protect it. Really, really cool. And then, you know, the Augurs and the, uh, the Insect to protect you from Guess Verdict. All in all, very solid deck construction. I haven't seen Tireless Tribe uh, since Cataxium Probe was banned along with Gush, so it does take quite a bit more to make, make it work, but uh, opponent is making it work. A green card that takes away flying. All creatures lose flying until a turn, but, I mean, opponent never casts it, right? Uh, pretty flooded here, but we're going to keep it. I don't want to throw this away and then get, you know, like a one land hand that we have to throw away. If they are on Cycle Storm, the life gain isn't really going to do too much for us. Ooh, land grant. So they are on Cycle Storm. Good to know. Uh, Bump in the Night is in the deck. Tinder Wallet is a blocker. But it wouldn't block this. Can block the Scorpion, though.
go for torture. Okay, immediately going for the red mana from Tinderwall. There's Metamorphose. We're up six tier. We don't have anything to do. So whatever the opponent's got, we're just going to wait and see. Okay, there's the Dark Ritual. They use this and this. Imposing Vantasaur. Fortunately, they don't have any white mana right now, so we don't have to worry about the healer. And they, have, they haven't cast too many spells, have they? They cast Metamorphose Dark Ritual this turn. So, like, Reaping the Graves is only for three. Uh, those songs first, so it would be for four. But, you know, they have six cards in hand, so they could still have any number of things. Oh, Cabal Ritual. That's pretty good. Let's them keep cycling. Fortunately, they're cycling Baron Moors instead of Creatures. Street Wraith, nice. Street Wraith again, put him to seven, nice. But they're going to have a pretty good storm here. So uh, sit back and watch Cycle Storm do its thing. There's Reap. So obviously we're going to be bringing in uh, Spell Bomb. And I think that's the only thing we bring in out of the sideboard are the two spell bombs. I don't really like the idea of trying to kill their creatures. Because they can just get them back, right? Like, as they're comboing, they just continue to combo. Wow, they're going all the way down to three here. So they have to win the game, basically, on this turn. Because I have lethal right on board there. Three damage. I have three damage in my hand. They don't know about. I do really like the tinder wall though. That's really cool. I don't think that... Um, I don't think I ever played Cycle Storm with tinder wall. Hey, we got there. All right, so we bring in the two spell bombs, and what do we take out? Probably the souls reaps. Yeah, exactly. Handsome. This is a great um, example of cycle storm. You wait as long as you can, then you go for it, and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. I'm wondering if trespassers curse would be better than soul reap. Uh, what about the one two? What do you mean? Yeah, what what about the scorpion? I'm thinking like soul reap. Basically, we're just not gonna have targets. Well, we we are only really looking to bring in spell bomb. Those are the only cards I wanted to bring in. But I also wanted to take all the Soul Reaps out. So we need... I'm looking for more for cards to bring in rather than cards to take out. And, um, like, the choices... We could bring in Trespasser's Curse. Or we could bring in Witches. And I think it's actually pretty close. Like, Witches is going to be able to do a point of damage every turn. Whereas Trespasser's Curse is only really going to be able to do, like, two damage. So maybe Witches is actually better than Curse here in this matchup. And I mean, Scorpion is okay versus a no creature deck because, like, it can attack in for one damage every turn. It's not the worst, whereas Soul Reap is basically a dead card.
Could use Guess Verdict. You know, two mana for a damage. Almost the same as the Witches. Wow, this one is land heavy. I do not like this hand. This is a good hand. <laughs> of course, I get rid of the uh, the card that gives me Madna or gives me the blood tokens, and then I draw all into the veins. Uh, that's magic sometimes, friends. Uh, to a Nima, yep, that is technically correct, the best kind of correct. Chomping on necks, chomping on wrists, all about that vampire action. Cool. Get some one drops there, very nice. Street Wraith, love to see it. I'll play the Okiba Reckoner Raid. And Sovereign Bite. Oh, they're really hurting on their lands there. Chomping on hearts. Oh, what is the fruit of Tezaris? One spiny tree with bitter, bitter fruit grows in the realm of Tezaris, outside the palace of Tezaris. I think it's like the uh, the crystal apple that Tree Trunks eats. I think that's what's going on there. Transports you to the crystal dimension. Hey, Steel Ball Run. What are the black burn advantages when compared to red burn? So, um, the most obvious ones, let me just think here for a second about what I'm going to do on my turn. I think we're just going to go Fruit into Sovereign's Bite, and then next turn we can go Alms of the Vein for the win. So the most obvious one is we're not vulnerable to, um, Pyroblast, or sorry, uh, Hydroblast and Blue Elemental Blast. And then also effects that prevent damage aren't going to be good against us because we have life loss. And then we also have cards that uh, are going to be effective out of the graveyard, like uh, Fruit of Tezaris and uh, Bump in the Night. However, um, it's going to take us a longer period of time to win the game. Whereas Burn... Ooh, uh, opponent puts the GGs in chat. I will respond with GGs. So, whereas Burn is able to actually win the game on turn 3 or 4, we're going to have to play a little bit longer. Um, good enough. We'll keep.
Is it popper off peak? Uh, not too sure what you mean by that. Sometimes the runbacks can happen though, just because um, they would have just been finishing their fifth match. So they enter in a new league, and because we're both joining, um, asking for matches at the same time, we just get paired off against each other again. Um, it happens quite a bit. Yeah, it, it's just like we both enter the queue again at the same time, so it's like, oh, oh yeah, here you go. Um, I think there are quite a few Brazilians playing around this time. And, you know, other people that are up at this uh, crazy hour. Alright, I'm going to cast some of my lower damage spells here on this turn. Vampire's Kiss and Scorpion. Um, this is going to set me up a little bit for next turn. And it might lull the opponent into a false sense of security. Yeah, the time shift. I really hope we do away with that. I could do without the whole uh, gain an hour, lose an hour. Hey, Steel Ball. Um, so Thoughtseize is a rare, and uh, this format only allows uh, commons, but we could use Duress, and uh, some decks do use Duress. It's just, you know, a, a choice of what you're going to put in your, your 15 slot. Yeah, yeah, you got it. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we got them to 11. Um, I kind of want to just play Tyrant's Choice, Tyrant's Choice. Hey, you got a Steel Ball. That's what I'm here for. Like, we could also play Crypt Rats, but, like, I just want to get the damage in. And then this is also going to make it really hard for them to use Street Wraith again. So we're kind of, like, taking away some of their options. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It makes the Street Wraiths really bad now. They can only do one Street Wraith now. And that will put them to one. And then next turn we get to Attack and Fruit for the win. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how this deck is a little bit slower. Here we're just ending uh, turn four. And, you know, like, we're going to win turn five, but Burn would have already won by now. Oh, I want to check something here. Opponent asked me a question. Yeah, it only hits creatures. Okay. Well, they got a pretty good uh, go here. It's their turn four. We know they have Reaping the Graves in hand. They were able to songs. They're a little bit blow on mana at the moment. If they manage to cast another songs, though, they're looking pretty good. Uh, 
Would the opponent want to cast the Life Gainer if they're stuck? Yeah, I could see that. I could see that being quite good. Because, you know, like, you play the Dranath Healer, and then, you know, you cycle five more times, and that is probably going to let you survive a turn. Uh, there's the Songs of the Damned, thanks to the Repository Scab, which is going to allow them to continue. Should actually uh, put them in a pretty good position. So we're going to have to wait a little bit as they continue to combo. I'm going to bring the graveyard out so that uh, anyone with, ha with a particularly good resolution is going to be able to see the cards in their graveyard. Because that's where a lot of the action is going to be, what's going on in the graveyard. They don't use the board too much. Just the graveyard and the stack, mostly. All right, so they're choosing not to go for the healer route. They could have gained quite a bit of life there with the healer. Just uh, play the healer, cycle, 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 cycle. Um, gain, you know, like eight life, which would have been enough to keep them going. But it looks like they're just going to have enough to, uh, to probably just win this turn, honestly. They returned the um, Songs of the Damned to their hand. So once they've emptied their hand of all their creatures and used all their mana, except for the black mana, um, they can Songs for a ton of black mana again, then Reaping the Graves, get everything back, keep on cycling, find access to some more colored mana, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, and eventually, once they've you know like done it enough, They'll play the stingers and cycle us to death. They should actually be pretty close to playing stinger. I think I would have played stinger at that point, but uh, it's generally better just to wait as long as possible before you uh, before you commit your stingers to the battlefield. Because when you play a stinger, your um. You're taking your mana pool down by two, and you aren't drawing a card for it instead of one mana draw card. So generally, you want to be certain that you're ready to win. And then uh, go for the stingers. Pretty cool they're able to do all this, finish the game at one life. You know, it hurts my heart a little bit. Like, ah, we were so close, we got them down to one. Ah. But it's fine, you know. I'm not too sure I like returning Street Wraith to their hand unless they're going to play healers. Because now you're not going to be able to... Like, those, those cards are just gone, basically. You're not going to be able to cycle them. They're just kind of like rotting in your hand. Um, like, okay, so yeah, here comes a stinger number one, probably stinger number two quickly follows. And they just need 10 cycles and they got 11 mana, so that should be really easy for them. But what I, what I was trying to get at is um, one of your main cards in this deck is Songs of the Damned. So 
when you take the street wraiths out of the graveyard, they're no longer producing mana with Songs of the Damned. And um, you're not able to cycle them. So why even bother putting them back in your hand, right? Kind of feels like they would be better off just staying in the graveyard. One of the other cool things about this deck is that uh, the Stinger triggers go on top of the Cycling trigger. So if you're comboing out and you have no cards left in your library, um, you can just like, uh, don't pass priority on your cycles. Just let your Stingers resolve. And then um, before the cycle resolves, cycle again. So you'll have two cycles on the stack and then your Stingers re-resolve cycle again oh wow there's cabal ritual cabal ritual again songs of the damned yeah it's a really cool combo deck okay there's reaping the graves so we know they got it we'll concede here Uh, if you're interested in checking out some more Cycle Storm content, I would highly recommend uh, Bryant Cook, uh, his YouTube channel, The Epic Storm. Um, he's done a lot of work on Cycle Storm and has some really quality videos on it. I mean, I do as well. If uh, you'd like to check out my channel, I've got lots of uh, popper and modern videos on there. But uh, if you're looking for some like premium Cycle Storm content, I would recommend Bryant Cook. All right, so we're going to bring in Geth's Verdict. Um, it does one damage in, the, in like, the worst case. And best case, maybe we can catch a uh, Repository Scab so they won't get the, uh, the trigger. Wow, that's land heavy. That is so land heavy, and we don't have any good cards. Let's mulligan this. All right, less heavy on the land. We can get rid of, like, maybe we even just get rid of Carnarium. So we can immediately go to two mana and start dealing damage, drawing cards. Street Wraith, love to see it. Sign and Blood myself. Very nice. Going to be able to play two cards for the next two turns. Get some good damage in. Ooh, and they're missing a land drop. That's big. Play another Okiba Reckoner Raid. And we'll go with, I think we'll go with Sovereign's Bite first. So we, they don't know that we have the Tyrant's Choice, just how much damage we're going to be dealing next turn. It's going to be a lot. 7, 8, 9, 10, put him to 2. Tyrant's Choice, we always choose Torture, Bump in the Night, Street Wraith is no longer an option, and we have a lethal threat on the table, not to mention the two lethal spells in our hand. They have one land here, this should be death. Okay. Uh, certainly interesting to watch combo decks, but not so much to play it. <laughs> Controls greater than, or much greater than other archetypes. I, I think that one of the really cool things about Magic is that... Um, 
there are so many options so that we get to uh, choose what we would want to play the most, right? So if you are drawn to control decks, you get to have that option. If you're drawn to aggressive decks or tempo decks, you know, that's there for you. Um, personally, I, I like to be able to play a large variety of decks so that when I come up against an opponent and I've played the deck that they're playing now, um, that gives me insight into what they're thinking about, what is in their deck, um, so that I think, you know, like if I play all the decks, if I play everything, then, you know, I'm going to have uh, a little bit of a leg up on uh, my competition. I like to think that anyways. Good enough. Play a turn two spell bomb here. Generally, you don't have to worry about the opponent's deck winning on turn two. So we're going to take the opportunity here to play Okiba Reckoner Raid on the first turn so that we can get that source of damage out. And then turn two, we'll play the spell bomb which is going to be a good way to uh, keep them from comboing on subsequent turns. And we'll get that Carnarium down for mana. And we'll be uh, doing pretty well for mana for the rest of the game. We could have played Bump in the Night there. But that would have made our next turn a little bit awkward. We're, we got like three mana for next turn, so we got two spells ready to go. Love that they let us see what's in their hand. It's one of the great advantages of land grant. When you're playing against it, you get to see what you're up against. Their hand is pretty good. That knot of the bone is pretty scary. But fortunately, we have the spell bomb to kind of cancel it. Here's Kiss. And we'll go Bump of the Night here. Doesn't really matter which of the two we choose, I don't think. And pass back. Not going to be using F6 anymore uh, for this game. We got the Spell Bomb on the battlefield, and I'm going to want to choose the perfect time to activate that, so we're just going to have to uh, pass priority every single time, manually. Okay, it's good for us. Four mana, four mana and spells, that's perfect. Let's get that uh, Menace text in action. <laughs> Lightning Helix at home, exactly. In some ways it's better. It's loss of life instead of damage, and uh, the mana cost is less restrictive. Get them down to three. I want two, three, four, five. This costs six. All right, so basically, we have the Nizumi plus uh, Fruit for the win next turn. And they're going to be kind of forced to go for something here. We're going to have to be careful about this because we know they have Knot of the Bone. So we're going to want to... Uh, like I said, we're going to want to be careful. So we know... They have songs, not of the bone. Dark ritual has just been cast. So we know these four cards, plus they have two other ones. If we try to respond to this, they could potentially gain four life. I think we just still wait. Let them do their thing.
think the most important thing is making sure they don't get to uh, combo. Because, yeah, they gain four life. Sure. And if I respond to this, then they get to, like, go songs, reaping, do a bunch of, like, a big song and dance. I think this is, was a bait to get me to activate the spell bomb. And I'm just going to say, fine, you gain four life. Um, so they want to add two mana with songs? Sure. Cabal Ritual. Okay. And the opponent puts the GGs in chat. So right there, um, we were we were being baited. Uh, opponent played Not of the Bone and Songs of the Damned, so that we would activate the spell bomb, and then they were going to be able to respond to that by casting Reaping the Graves. So we understood that the important thing was Reaping the Graves, and we just waited and waited, and when we didn't take the bait, opponent uh, bowed out. So we're on the draw here with a one land hand. We got two cards we can cast. If we get the land, it's really good, but if we miss, it's super bad. I think I'm gonna mulligan. It's a one land hand again, but we got more cards we can cast. Let's just get rid of Alms of the Vein and go for it. Oh, we're playing against Boros. Uh, I think we start with Okiba Reckoner Raid. This has been a cool card. You know, not super impressive, but I think that uh, it's definitely be a so been a solid inclusion in the deck. I was obviously really hoping for a swamp there. I guess we'll just play the Serrated Scorpion and pass. Steel Ball Run. Cheers. This is starting to look a lot more like Affinity. Interesting. So I guess they went white because uh, they have a lot of Metalcraft creatures. Uh, Source of Plowshare is common. Nope. Believe that was an uncommon. Uh, hey Coop, did you see Snapple's Jund build? Looks fun. Actually, Luca... Uh, yes, I have, and in a little less than two hours, um, the league that I played with that deck will be on YouTube. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Definitely enjoyed it. Oh, this is um, Jeskai. That's what's going on here. This is uh, Jeskai Ephemerate. Uh, miss on the land again. Guess we'll go for a bump in the night. Still looking what to play next after the storm ban. Oh, a lot of options. If you're looking to use some of the cards that you got from uh, from your Storm deck that you can't play anymore, then Cycle Storm is a deep, decent option. Plays Cabal Ritual, Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal. And uh, you probably don't have to worry about a ban with Cycle Storm. Don't like the ideas of just having the petals just sitting in a binder. Yeah, no kidding. A card like that needs to be played. 
Did they ban both the Modern Horizons 2 Storm cards? Yes. Both are gone. Thankfully. Oh, they have the Lightning Bolt. Womp womp. Killed the back of my jacket. Uh, I think we just go Sign and Blood here. Like to draw some more lands, yes. Eh. No lands. Maybe we can get land next turn. We can go Fruit, Soul Reap. Oh, that's not good news. Playing Mold Drifter like that means they have Ephemerate. <laughs> they don't even let the draw two resolve first. They're like, nope. I had Ephemerate in my hand the whole time. Didn't need to look for it or anything. Alright, really need a land off the top if we're going to continue to play this game. I need to get this Soul Reap to go off. Kill that Mold Drifter. And I want it to do damage. I'm not a huge fan of just casting Soul Reap on Mold Drifter Pass. If that's what we have to do, it's what we have to do. But I don't think that's how we win this game. Alright. Good draw. And Soul Reap the Mole Drifter. So they can't Ephemerate it again. Speaking of cards I want banned. Ephemerate, please. You can keep all the other Blink cards. I don't care. This one specifically, I would like to see out of the format. Because there are a lot, a lot of Popper cards that Blink. But this one is just uh, head and shoulders above the rest. Oh, the food token. Don't like that. Put some to 13. And they have counterspell up. Cuba. Sign of blood, target myself. Get that counter spell. One of the coolest feelings in uh, in Magic is being able to sign and blood target the opponent for the win. Absolutely love that play line. Been lucky enough to do it several times. Every time it's just felt like the best thing. Sign and blood, target you. What was your life total again? Oh, two? Oh my. One card on top, one on bottom with Preordain. 
Yeah, Tyrant's Choice is definitely a reader. First time I cast it, um, playing this league, I had to read it. It's like, pretty easy actually from my side, just always choose Torture. Okay, they counter one of our worst burn spells. And gain three life. So we've got seven in hand, putting them potentially four. Problem is they still got five cards in hand. So we have fewer lands, fewer cards in hand, just fewer resources and all. Oh, the Archaeomancer. I think that actually kills us. The Archaeomancer, get back Ephemerate. Ephemerate the Archaeomancer, get back Counterspell. And then next turn, Ephemerate, get back Ephemerate, Ephemerate, get back, maybe late to dinner? Oh, they don't have any more creatures in the graveyard. In any event, like, we're toast. It's a circus of value. But yeah, basically, we just didn't want the opponent to get to this phase of the game. So our options here, we can keep playing, like we have 20 life and we're ahead on clock. So we can uh, drain the opponent's time resource for a little while, but um, yeah, we're not going to win this game. So it really is going to come down to your own personal choice. Uh, if you're going to want to try and get some time value or, you know, if you're just going to quit and uh, either way, you know, whatever you choose. Uh, totally fine and the soul of migration is actually going to put a close on this game quite quickly admiral spade thank you for the follow friend still i think we can uh bleed another minute off the opponent's clock so let's do that just in case this uh match ends up going really long because they've used up nearly 10 minutes I should just be F6-ing here. I don't need to use any of my clock on their turn. And they should just be going quickly to combat, attacking with all their flyers and passing. They don't need to do anything else. This is going to kill us very, very fast. So they can just hold up counter magic... And uh, I don't really need to do much else. Oh, it looks like they want to... That'll quicken the clock, I think, a little bit. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that that's actually a pretty good play because that means that they'll be able to win um, 
on the next turn instead of having to wait potentially two more turns. Okay, I don't think that was a good play. I mean, in, in some senses, racing is playing the game, right? No, I wanted to torture you with a choice. I can definitely understand the frustration of playing against control. Oh yeah, it's been GG for a while. I'm just bleeding time off the opponent's clock. Alright, so. Uh, Trespasser's Curse. Seems pretty good, so does Bell Bomb. Uh, Serrated Scorpion seems quite bad. Let's take that out. I like Crypt Rats quite a bit. Maybe... Like, all the Trespassers Curse actually seems pretty good, because then it's just really difficult for them to uh, flood the board. It's really difficult for them to ephemerate. Like, we got four Trespassers Curse on the battlefield... Every ephemerate costs them four life, and they'll have to think twice. So I think we'll just go for all the curse. Salt in a game is weird to me, but I'm a boomer. We learn to lose as well as winning. I found that um, I because you know I've played a lot of games with a lot of different people. I found that different people play games for different reasons. So one of the uh, the causes of salt is. Uh, the two people playing the game don't come from, um, aren't entering the game from the same space. And uh, one of them gets, you know, really frustrated because, oh, I thought we were playing this game for fun. And the other one's like, no, like, we're playing this game to win or, you know, just something to that effect. Like, there's uh, some sort of um, misunderstanding there. But uh, I don't know. I think, like, a little bit of salt is, uh, is a good spice. You just got to make sure you know everything in moderation, right? If someone salts off big time, that's no fun for anyone. I've known some people that can uh, just kill the energy in a room because of the salt that they're projecting. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. Saying good luck, have fun. When you're uh, a combo in Legacy, is like putting oil on the fire. I always kind of figured, like, you know, you're talking to yourself when you say that. You know, like, maybe uh, you could go one step further, pull out a mirror at the start of the game. Good luck, have fun, handsome. Uh, opponent's mulligating pretty heavy here. All the way down to four so far. Okay, they're keeping four cards. Uh, we'll start off with some fruit. Why don't you try this crystal apple? Send you to the Crystal Dimension. And then we'll put down a turn 2 Trespasser's Curse. Ooh. 
would be a great persona for a Twitcher. Yeah, steel ball run. That's one of the uh, the differences between uh, paper and moto. And one of the reasons I appreciate moto so much is we have the chess clock. So if one player is taking the vast majority of the time in order to uh, to play their game, they're going to be punished for it with a loss, a match loss. Another swamp. All right, let's start with Sign and Blood. Play land first to uh, play around Mana Tithe. Not that I think they play the card. Uh, opponent, you're going to have to play a lot faster if uh, you expect to be able to win in three games. Like, if you think that you can win in this game where you mulligan down to four, fine. You have enough time for that. But if we're going to play three games, you got to play faster. Not necessarily because the control player is slow. It's just because control wins in a lot more turns. Well, it's also the, uh, the sense that, like... Just because the player isn't slow doesn't mean they're going they aren't going to take up more time. So Oh, I like that. I think we'll go for fruit here. And then we have the spell bomb to combo with Soul Reap. I, I kind of hate that we are just like flooded on lands though. So some decks just naturally take more time and you know like they could be playing at a very reasonable pace, but they're still, you know, potentially taking up more than twice the amount of clock than the opponent is. Now oh, they're going to ice one of my lands. Sure. Tyrant's Choice. Yeah, I like the chess clock, but it would be very difficult, I believe, would be very difficult to implement in um, paper play. Play Legacy Lands. It can take time to win even more before when we played Rashad and Fort. Yeah. All right, so we're in a little bit of a difficult situation here. We just don't have a lot of great cards. Can I counterspell that? Sure, I'm just going to play it again. Yeah, exactly, Pseudo. Exactly. It's really, really difficult. Soul Reap kind of just being a dead card in hand at the moment. I'm actually going to want to uh, deploy that Spell Bomb pretty soon. Ugh, terrible. We're so flooded. But if we play the spell bomb, we're not going to necessarily be able to get the three life out of the soul reap. But I really want to play spell bomb at this point because they're about to be able to deploy the um, Archaeomancer. Oh, 
Thank you, Donut. I missed that. Every single word on a magic card is important. I should know this. Another fruit. Just gonna pass. We have so much mana, we're gonna be able to do a lot of stuff on a turn where they don't have, you know, a ton of mana up to just counter everything we're doing. Are they going to ice in a land again? Sure. Oh, they could ice the spell bomb. That would actually be good. Really think, like, we have so much mana here and so few resources. I really think icing the spell bomb would have been a good way to go. Yeah, let you counter that one so I can cast this one. Oh, you have another counter spell. Okay. Still ticking time off their clock. And as long as we have Trespasser's Curse, it's going to be difficult for them to kill us. Here comes Mole Drifter. And it uh, looks like they could have an Ephemerate up. Come on, another black spell. I guess we got Fruit as another black spell anyway. Tyrant's Choice. I think I go for Tyrant's Choice Fruit here. I don't know, it just really looks like they have Ephemerate. So, like, if they want to Ephemerate, that's another damage anyways. Damn. They go down to two and then back up to six. Maybe. Yep. It's very possible. <sighs> Come on. Blooded. Now they get to start coming in for damage. It's an option to draw a card with Spell Bomb. I think we're going to have to, because otherwise we're just dying.
They're going to Galv Blast their own Mold Drifter. That's fair. This costs four. I'm going to sign on Blood myself, try and get a bump in the night here. Please, 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 please. Yeah. That was way too close, way too hard for what that should have been. Um, the opponent mulligan to four. And here we are, turn 12. But we got flooded hard. Eight lands in 12 turns. That's a lot. We're playing like 18 lands, so... Felt like a lot anyways all right enough complaining about that nobody cares let's uh move on to game three opponent's got nine minutes left on their clock A little bit awkward because we don't have any one drops, but I'm going to keep it. Opponent mulliganing heavily again. They're down to five cards this time. Five cards on the play, four cards on the draw. Almost the same. One drop. Ugh. <laughs> There's the one drop we wanted last turn. Curse you. Next turn, I'll curse again, plus fruit. Oh, Dawnbringer Cleric. That could potentially destroy the curse. Yep. That's a hassle. I do like the land draw there. That means we'll be able to play a double two drop next turn. Still going to play Trespasser's Curse again. And a Fruit. Yeah, that was really, really good for them. Having an answer to Trespasser's Curse, so I'm not getting, you know, two, three, four damage out of it. May ephemerate it. Give me a break. Well, their mulligan was good. They uh, found some really strong cards versus us. At least they're not gaining six life from the Dawnbringer Cleric. That would also be a pain. I'm going to hit him for seven here. And uh don't think I need any more lands off the top deck. Ugh, a lone missionary. They are set up so well to gain life. Uh do I like this deck more than Redburn? I wouldn't say that. I like I, I think that I prefer Redburn. Um, but this is uh, kind of playing from a different angle, and it's fun to try new things, you know? So yeah, now they get to ephemerate the Lone Missionary, gain another 4 life. So they've gained 8, 10 life, plus getting rid of the 2 Trespassers Curse. Opponent's hand might have been, uh, they, they mulliganed heavily, but they had some very good cards versus us. Oh, and they're passing here, so they probably have counter magic. Oh, no, this is a, uh, an ice to tap one of our lands. That's fine. Sure. Uh, go for Sovereign's Bite. 
and play a spell bomb. Seems like the philosophy of fire hasn't been followed in this deck. There might be a couple of cards that don't follow the philosophy of fire. Cast down is definitely one of them. Uh, spell bomb also uh, doesn't do damage. Looks like another ice. Oh, and a braid. Well, in that case, we're going to activate it. What do we draw? Alms of the Vein. That's a good one with the blood tokens. Also, I really like getting Reckoner's Raid out as soon as possible, but that's just awkward considering what our mana is. Maybe we go for Alms of the Vein, and then if we draw a land, we can play Reckoner Raid. Okay, pass back. No, no attacks? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Don't do it. Don't ephemerate Lone Missionary. Don't you do it. I've worked really hard. All this damage. After you gain 10 life. Oh no, they're going to gain more. Oh no, they're not gaining life. They're going to go after Reckoner Raid. I think. Because if they were gaining life, they would go for this. Okay. That is a that is a play that you, that you can make. And they're in the red, and I have 30 life. Now they're starting to play faster now that they're in the red. They've f 6 They're at two after all that life they've gained. We've got fruit in the graveyard to be able to uh, constantly do two and two and two and two. But they're going to be able to gain four here by ephemerating the lone missionary. So we still have a lot of work to do. There's Muldrifter. Tyrant's Choice. Puts him to two again. And then maybe we can spell bomb and try and find uh a thing. Hmm. 
we miss. I think I'm going to discard this with blood at the end of their turn. Then again, it would let it would let me cast fruit plus another spell next turn. Oh, that's a good uh, that's a good point, Donut. Oh, bump in the night. We were one card away. Yeah! Awesome! We got a 4-1 with Black Burn. All right. Oh, that's excellent. Party on, chat. All right, so this is the deck that we were playing today. A Black Burn. Definitely had a lot of fun playing it. Um, definitely feels pretty different from what a Red Burn would be like. <laughs> the classic Burn deck. As, we were, as we've uh, discussed before, we don't have to worry about Blue Elemental... Excuse me. We don't have to worry about Blue Elemental Blast, and we don't have to worry about Hydro Blast which are uh, cards that are played quite a bit. And then also, like, the gaining the life has actually been significant. If you were paying attention um, towards the end of the last game, when the opponent was in the red, you know, they had some damage on board. They were attacking for, like, five damage a turn, but we were at over 30 life. Uh, so it was going to take them, you know, at least uh, six turns in order to be able to reduce our life total to zero, and that's if we didn't cast any more spells to gain life. So that is something to consider if uh, your games go long, or if you're playing against Burn Yourself, or a different kind of aggro deck. A lot of our cards gain life. So that'll make it a little bit more difficult for them to, uh, to burn you out. It's like, almost every card is a Lightning Helix. Seems good, man. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, we didn't get too much of a chance to use uh, a lot of the specific pieces. Actually, I found a lot of the time I was just wanting to jam the same deck again, or maybe take out Soul Reap, uh, just because either they weren't going to have any creatures, or you know maybe they have green creatures, or what have you. But um, yeah, so with uh, with the main deck with us wanting to take out very few cards out of it, I wonder if we might want to um, have more of a, a variety of different cards, you know, a lot more twos as opposed to threes and fours. The thing is, like, Gev's Verdict, I think we need to keep as a four of because that's specifically for Bogles, but um, it might be something to consider, maybe. Uh, the Spell Bomb, as uh, Shauna was saying, um isn't, you know, like, part of the philosophy of fire. However, I do think that having something that hits the graveyard uh, in Popper nowadays can be pretty good. Like, the, the Spell Bomb, um, while it wasn't, like, super good against the uh, the Jeskai Ephemerate deck, um, it was actually very good when we played against Cycle Storm twice. So, you know, take uh, take from that what you will. 